And we're live. Hello. We're live. Ooh. Hey guys, good evening and welcome to High Side Channel. We're discussing Mandela effects and the like. Thanks for joining me today as we uncover the mysteries of the Mandela effect itself and find out the true meaning of it all. We must discover what is really happening, what is really going on change these things that we know and hold dear to us. And let us help others discover the meaning of the Mandela effect, how it affects them, and the price of help. Thank you. And be sure to hit the like and subscribe down below. Hey guys, good evening and welcome to my exciting channel. We're discussing Mandela effects and of the like. Thank you for joining in. Welcome all Mandela Affecting. So we got a fun show for you guys. I'm glad you could make it on such short notice. Thank you all for being here. Happy, happy Easter. Um, hope you all had a very happy Easter. This is uh, <laughs> one day after. <laughs> we, we just a had a show. show. Ago. I, I know you're probably thinking like, wow, a week went by already? <laughs> no, but we're back on after two days, and we're just going to be on here just for a short while discussing. Uh, uh, there's Apparently there's a something with, the, with this Nintendo and I had to cover it. Uh, I felt like I really had to cover this one. So, again, glad you all could make it on such short notice. So and we're, we're also discussing. Uh, uh, and Sandy are here with me as well. Uh, go ahead, Sandy. You, you were saying. We're also discussing. It's 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 not so much about. The, well, it is about the Nintendo, but it's also about technology in general. Research how the Mandela effect can be confusing, how people can make mistakes. We all can make mistakes yep. because research is so confusing and can be very hard. So this is not like an attack on anyone. This is not debunking anybody. This is not, not that. This is not what we're doing. It says, because the title is literally reacting and explaining because that's what we're doing. We're showing, we're going to show bits of um, all times the video that he just put out, just little bits, um, as well as talk about another technology that could have been misconstrued as a Mandela effect. That was that one's definitely not. But we're gonna get into that. We just put there's ten people in the chat. Well, nine because I'm one of them. Give it a couple more minutes. Not not like a couple more minutes, but do you want to say hi to the chat, Teresa? Like just to because yeah, yeah, Robert Teresa, Humphreys to... here. Yeah, do a couple okay. of Well, well, I can stand there. We got Dale Hess. We got Sandy Diva. Robert Humphrey. Hi, Jeff Sanzibar. It looks like, Brian, you're in there. And that's it for right now. I hope more people join. I did post it in several different ME groups. So I'm hoping people did see the, the post. Just yeah. it's, This was kind of like a last minute thing, right, guys? This was last minute, and we're an hour late because I had, <laughs> didn't have enough time to put it all together. Hey, Jeff. This is a this is a very important video, guys. You guys need to stay tuned with this one. Hi, Wise Asker. Welcome. I like your name. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's, again, I'm going to keep repeating myself until we actually start. This is not an attack on uh -huh. anyone. It's not a debunking. No one did anything wrong. It's just um, I need to clarify some things after Brian brought it to me. Yeah. Brought the, brought this information to me because what I found, it doesn't. One thing wasn't said that should have been said, and I that it needs to be out there, especially since All Time is such a large channel, and in the Mandela Effect community. Pardon me, I gotta clear my. Sorry about that. In the Mandela Effect community, the debunkers love finding things that we say that they can easily debunk. Yes. And that, are, you and talking, the are you talking about when somebody like twists your arm the other way or something? Like <laughs> they kind of. No, they, they they just love finding when we screw up. If we accidentally oh. screw up. Or if we forgot forgot to mention something important, they love using that to, to say that we're crazy, 
to say that that we're just misremembering. I don't want that to happen here. So I have information I need to add. And that's why we're going to be reacting and explaining and using. We're going to start with something that has nothing to do with Nintendo, but it's technology. And it's another one of those things that some people may have said could be a Mandela effect when it's honestly, it, there's no way it could be. Uh, and I'll give you an example of how it could be if it was. I know this is all confusing because we're waiting for people to show up. But I guess we could get started because the first part is going to be the other thing, Brian. I mean, there's there's nine people here. And there's going to be people well, yeah, watching sure. after. We just got started. Um, you know, usually we end up with like 50 people watching at any given time. Um, I see the numbers jumping up. Now we're at 11. That's great. Brian, you could... Brian, you could talk about the pink full moon. That was just out. Uh, yeah, for those of you who didn't know, we had a pink full moon. Or a pink, pink. moon. Yep. Yeah. You, want to you can maybe find pictures somewhere, right, online? You want to show some while we're waiting on more people? Yeah, I can, I can show some pictures. Okay. They're there. <laughs> so it's April's full moon. Yep, pink. It's pretty cool, too. I, you know, I take pictures of the moon all the time. Um, I think right. I've I don't on here before. Yeah. You, you know you're not presenting, right? Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to present. Uh, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. You know? Okay. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's oh, the wow. April uh, pink moon. Pretty. Uh, it's like the whole world is turning pink. We have pink dolphins now. You know, we have... Rainbow yep. Mountains. I mean, what is going on here? <laughs> so, Very colorful world uh, we're in. I am not signing up. <laughs> These things pop up. So, what is the pink moon? Why does it happen? What does it all mean? So, here is everything you need to know. So, there it is. Stop. It's simply the full moon of spring. Now, do you guys ever remember this in your memory? I don't. I don't remember no. there being a pink moon. I remember a harvest moon around October. Uh, and it's kind of orange in color. It's like an orange moon. Yeah. Um, I don't remember there being a pink moon specifically. But it says, uh, is the moon even pink? Well, that picture sure showed it, didn't it? Uh, no, it's actually just a full moon called the pink moon. It can appear as a different color when the sunlight reflects off at night at the right time. And it may even be pink to some, but there's no way relevant being it, um, at the pink moon. So that's weird that they call it the pink moon, right? Yeah. Now, now, if you guys remember, um, they had in 20 and 21, the pink moon also happened to be a, a super moon. And this is when the full moon coincides with the time when the moon is at its closest to the Earth. And as a result, it makes the moon appear larger. Hi, Curie, sir. Now, this was a blood Welcome, moon. Welcome, Curie, sir. Hey, Curie, sir. Now, this was a blood yep. moon. It, hey, Teresa, right. you mentioned Jeff is in the chat. Jeff Zanzibar, he's here with us, too. We have Jeff, uh, Mark Basket, the one. Yep, everybody. I'm curious, sir, who all just popped up in the chat. Uh-huh. Keep an eye out for yeah, preliminal. Uh, maybe, hopefully, preliminal will make it today. Yeah. The The blood moon during uh, July 27th. Mark Lerner. Mark Lerner's <laughs> here. All right. <laughs> So, They're popping in. That's cool. So it has like a, re a religious um, significance to the pink moon. It's also known as the Paschal moon. Uh, this is where it marks the first full moon after the spring equinox, and it's used to set the date for Easter. That's actually how they set the date for Easter. So apparently this uh, Paschal or pink moon has been around for quite some time. Uh, no. I don't no. Ever hear no. Yeah. Oh, my. I can't. It's it's called the pink moon in, in the Jewish religion. The pink moon is identified as the Passover moon. And that's actually how they set their holidays. Isn't that interesting? That is very interesting Ooh. considering my ex's family was Jewish and it's the first I'm hearing of it. <laughs> you never knew this? That's crazy. Just, just some interesting uh, little tidbits there. Now, um, we, we, a lot of people have also been talking about recently with these uh, purple lights. Should we mention that, Sandy, or 
Is that well, that's, too hot? That's in the presentation. That's how we start. And before we start oh, again, okay. because now there's 20 people, or now oh, there's yay. 19. Yes, we have to have 20 Before people we start again, me. I am again reiterating for those that just got here. This is not an attack on anyone. This is not a debunking. This is not a video about saying somebody's wrong. We just need to add stuff to this. Right, right, right. Okay. Like kind of like adding uh, certain flavors and spicing. You know, we're spicing it up here, really. Right. And Sandy really does her work. That's why her. Um, if you notice, uh, whenever I zoom in on stuff, it says "Untitled by Mandel Effect Research." Uh, Sandy. And really great at that's what this slide is all about, Brian. It says, "To be clear, <laughs> we are not debunking any Mandel Effect or channel. We're simply showing how important research is when showing Mandel effects." And look, you can tell. I was rushing. The H is off the, the box. So say it, it's gone. Research yeah. is extremely important whenever a Mandela effect is suspected, especially around changes to technology. Here is an example. Yeah, whatever. So so uh, now we just have like downloadable content, whereas before you had to buy the actual cartridge, you know? And mm -hmm. this is like nostalgia for me. You know, going into a GameStop is like nostalgia these days. Yeah. So, so here we go. Uh, go ahead. You want to read that, uh, Sandy? Actually, Teresa, why don't you read and then I'll interject with stuff. You want me to start reading? Yes. Okay. Over the past few years, some streetlights across the United States started turning blue or purple. Which is odd, but it's not a ME. Again, this is not an ME. I seen this a while back and I questioned it myself, and I'm glad now it's being clarified by Sandy, which makes me feel better because I'm glad I didn't post it. <clears throat> just the bottom, I'll read the top because I can see it. Better. Okay. You just read the bottom. Okay. It's a manufacturer defect through Duke Energy, Acuity Brands. And a subsidiary of Acuity Brands, American Electric Lighting. Go ahead, so Sandy. Here, here's three different articles from three different <clears throat> states across the U.S. One's Kentucky, one's North Carolina, and I believe the bottom one is Florida. Mm -hmm. All stating that they got their lights from the same companies. Duke Energy gets the lights from Acuity Brands. And Acuity Brands uses American electrical lighting to manufacture the lights. So they're all coming from the same source throughout the U.S. And not Correct. all the lights in the U.S. are affected. It's like a different batch here, a different batch there. Batches between 2017 and 2019, so far it seems, um, yep. were defective. All right, Brian, you can go on. Do you want me to read? Yeah. Okay. LED, LED light comes in every color of the rainbow at various kelvins. The hotter or the higher kelvins, the brighter the emitted light is. Blue and purple light brightest at 10K in kelvins. Street lights need to be bright for visibility and safety, so manufacturers of street lights will sometimes use black or purple LED. Yeah. Blue, I'm sorry, blue or, or purple LED, then coat them in fade resistant white paint. Okay, so stop here for a second, Brian. Okay. Can you zoom in on that chart? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, there you go. street lights typically are much brighter than the light bulbs you would buy in the store that are white. Correct. They do have white LEDs, but they're only 4,000 uh, Kelvin. So they're not anywhere near as bright as you would find on a street lamp. And that is why they usually use the blue or the purple, because it's much brighter. And then they just coat it in white paint to make and it And aren't they solar powered for the most part, guys? I don't know about these powered. being solar powered. I don't know if these were solar powered or not. Some of but them But a are. lot of them are. Yeah. Yes. Now, Kelvin's, that's pretty damn, pretty darn hot. I mean... I've never heard of a Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The That's bulbs, 
that American Electric Lighting, a.k.a. Acuity, distributed through companies like Duke Energy were purple bulbs coated with white paint, which gave the brightest white light for visibility. Welcome, Burgos. Hey, Burgos. The bulbs with the defective paint faded and in some cases peeled off, exposing the LED color underneath. Manufacturer defect, not Mandela effect. Now, on to why we are here tonight. Stay here, Brian. So, you guys, oh. you can see this. these are the same lights from the same company on that exactly. street. They're yellow on one side, blue on the other. Yep. Okay, so, Brian, let her see. read and then play the clip. And then, then oh, I want to okay. talk. So, okay. the next one, read first, play the clip, I'll talk. Okay. All the time, all the all time states that in his past, the NES is that NES, Sandy? Yes, Nintendo yes. Entertainment. System. NES could not play games unless the cartridge was pressed down, which is true. He even shows the manual stating this. Okay, Brian, hit play. What is the Mandela effect regarding this? Here it is. Apparently, you don't have to press the game cartridges down to play them. And not just that, you never have. When I first heard this, I thought, what? There's no way this is correct. But it seems like it is. The games were apparently playable without pressing them all the way down in the system. Okay, so he says apparently, which is good. And he's, he goes on to say, more good things <laughs> like i'm not debunking him i'm not attacking him reiterating this over and over so he is explaining that the potential mandela effect is that you can now play them without pushing them down okay Teresa, go and read Teresa. okay i'll i'll go ahead and read it all time okay. shows a video where someone with an original unmodified NES gets a game to work in the up position. Up, but don't remove it. Just leave it like that and then hit power. And sure enough, it works in that position as well. Just leave the cartridge up and turn it on. It works perfectly. This is why we have trust issues. I don't understand how okay. this thing that never worked and has never worked now totally works. I had to go back to the beginning to see if I was really losing my mind. So I looked up an original owner's manual for the Nintendo Entertainment System just to see what it said. Just as I remember from back then, it says, press down on the game pack until it locks into place and close the chamber lid. There it is, evidence straight from Nintendo that you did indeed have to press the game cartridge down, or game pack as they called it back then, down to get the game to play. Okay. Now let me say something here. First off, because it doesn't fit, the only thing it showed in the video was that the light was on solid. It was not flashing. So that's what you can see in the first frame when the guy was saying, and now it works. The light was solid. Um, obviously, I want you to go to All Times Video, watch it yourself, because this is just clips from the, it's not the whole video. But um, it is correct. And see, the thing is, I found a very good reason why this is the case, and it's, well, we'll get to that. Let's go, Brian. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll read it. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, so he goes on to state that some of the theories as to why the cartridges play in the up position, but not all, including the one that most seem to agree is the cause. So here you mm -hmm. go, here's this video clip. Then on the other side of the internet, I keep finding videos of people saying this is an effect of replacing the 72 pin connector inside the device. But surely this isn't just a case of every single NES console out there having its internals replaced. Pause. You're talking potentially tens of millions of consoles. Should I go back? No, stay right there. He said, but surely this can't be a case of all of them being replaced, tens of millions. I don't know that there are tens of millions anymore. 
I mean, right. how many of you still have a, 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 an original Nintendo that still I works? Used to, I used to have mine. I sold it during the uh, COVID, actually. Right, but you, you play video games a lot. I used to have yeah. one. I don't have it anymore. Like, I, I'm just saying, I don't think there's as many out there original that are used as tens of millions anymore. I think there's less, the, but that really doesn't even matter. I just wanted to make that point that I think there's less today. And I do think a lot of them have aftermarket parts. It, it, the majority well, I know, of them. I know mine, mine for sure did because the guy I bought it from was like, he was a video game shop. He had like all these games and everything and he sold them at the flea market, which mm -hmm. is where I bought the game system from him. And he right. said that it was, it was modded. Like the pins were replaced. He said, Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I would think of the ones on the market still, the majority have some sort of aftermarket part. Um, I, maybe not the top loader, because that was later on, like Eddie Von Keen has. But the original, <clears throat> like, I'm, we're talking first release one, ninth, the, the very first one in the U.S. And I think a lot of them have had the pins replaced, but we're going to get on to that about the pins in a minute. So go on. And, and you, just for research purposes, Sandy, um, before we continue, Teresa, can you look up when the Nintendo came out? What's the exact day and how much? I'll get it, it for you. Hold on. The original Nintendo? Yeah, look up yes. when the original in Nintendo. In the U.S. Yes. I'll get it for US, you. Just hold on. The date and the, the month, the month, day, and year that it came out to the U.S., as well as how much it cost when, when, you, when you bought it. Like what was the yeah, I ran in, the reason why I'm bringing this, uh, I'm showing you guys this because I found something that I kept seeing over and over and over, which told me this might not be a Mandela. I know it sounds crazy, but trust me on this. Just trust me on this. Okay. Teresa, did you find it? Encyclopedia Britannica. The Nintendo console, or Nintendo Entertainment System, was released as the Famicom in Japan on July 15, 1982. Hey. Hold on, hold on. Did you so get that? Japan. Was, That's Japan, Japan, Teresa. Japan. Not the U.S. Okay, here it is. 1985. Right. Nintendo yes. released. Guys, I got it. It was in October 1985, right? Yes, right. it says... A Nintendo released as a limited batch Nintendo Entertainment Systems in New York City, quietly launching the most influential video game platform of all time. On this day in 1985, the American video game market was in shambles. Yes, October 18, 1985. Okay, oh, and Eddie Bunkeen was right. <laughs> uh, it cost $149.99. But, but it, wait, that's what they charged. Eddie. Sandy, weren't there two releases? Like, didn't they? There have, were two um, releases, um, but one was, I think, at Christmas time. They released a different J two releases. Japan got it. Japan got it first, July 15, nineteen eighty three. Right. We yes, but the U.S. released a ninety nine dollar version that did not include Duck Hunt or the gun. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Huh. The, but the main version had the Duck Hunt gun and the Duck Hunt game and yes. was $149.99. Yes. Okay, so the system came released with 17 games. Yep. Did you know that? There were 17 games released. Wow. Duck Hunt, Duck Hunt came with the console. Unfortunately, yes. I didn't get Duck Hunt with mine. Mine only came with Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers. You can, you have to keep, we're still playing the video, Brian. Okay, so we're halfway through. Yeah, did we? Yes. Uh, so we got the price. We got the date that it came out. We're met, keep that date in your head, okay? Was that all of them have had their internals replaced? I suppose it's a possibility, but I've also found Reddit threads and comments from people claiming that they have their original NES consoles from their childhood that have never had anything replaced and now work without pushing down the game cartridges. Pause. Or is that the end of it? That's perfect. Okay, so listen. First of all, good on him for saying, um, I suppose it's possible that all the parts are replaced. 
good on him for saying that. The problem I have is right there. The people saying, I still have my original one, and it works in the opposition. I found a reason for this. Like, a mechanical reason, not a Mandela effect reason. And that's what I need to share. All right, go ahead, Brian. Next slide. Okay. Teresa, do you want to read again? Yes, I will. Can I read it? Yep. Okay. He concluded that you could never play a game like this in his past. And we agree, but is it a true Mandela? We are leaning towards no. Here's why. Mm -hmm. The most accepted reason why this could happen to factory made machines, those not refurbished or modified, is a Nintendo confirmed design flaw. Mm -hmm. With repeated use, the connector pins in the machine and in the cartridge will bend leading to the pins, not making contact and the down position, which leads to the flashing red light of death. Hold so, on. Brian, Stop I just right want to state... I've never heard of the flashing light of death, except in the Is Xbox that something you need game. to play, Sandy? The little no, thing yeah, that... no, wait. The flashing red light of death might be a, a new moniker for it, but basically the red uh -huh. light would flash, and you wouldn't get anything on the screen but, like, a color. I but, see. Um, okay. Um, or a blinking light, they would call it. But um, I want to point out here that this video is from Gaming Historian on YouTube. And um, mm -hmm. this is a way to fix this. Go ahead, Brian. Okay. So you're going to play it? You mean put moot? Oh, wait. Before you play it. It doesn't sound like the solution for you. There are alternatives, but most of them are temporary. For example, you can bend the pins on the connector back to reestablish a tight grip on the game. You can also just replace the pin connector, as I've done several times. Some people even boil their pin connector in distilled water to clean it. But over time, the pins will loosen, and you may see that dreaded blinking light once again. So that's that blinking light you get when it's not making contact and it can't read the card. I've never had that. And we are you going to talk about in the presentation, Sandy, about the blowing of the cartridges because. We've always had to blow on them to get them to work, supposedly. And they're yes, they're saying that blowing on them doesn't really do anything. They're saying that they may get rid of some debris, but it's the bent pins that are the problem. And it was the act of removing the cartridge and putting it back in that made it work again, not blowing on the cartridge. That could be a Mandela effect. Teresa, are you watching something on the television? No, I'm not. Is somebody watching Joey television? Is. Joey is. Not me. Okay, so Not me. My TV is off. you read. Okay. I found plenty of evidence showing machines working in the up position, but not the down position, as well as some working in both positions. And bent pins seem to be the cause with people fixing the issue by fixing the pins. So people will fix the pin before they fix the pins they will only play in the up position because that's when the pins make the best contact and then when they push the cartridge down it stops working and then they fix the pins and then it works in the down position again and not oh, wow. in the up position so i think it's the pins being broken which is a confirmed design flaw yep by nintendo so go, go on, Brian. Well, yeah, and, and Nintendo was trying to rush to get this out there because, you know, yep. after right. the, the fail, after the Atari epic fail, you know, game systems were in a slump. Mm -hmm. So, for us, it seems like there are a couple reasons and a NES will play in the up position. Design flaw, bent pins, refurbishment, new board pins, modification, windscreen mod, 
meaning the original, when functioning properly, would not play in the up position. So let me just mention here the windscreen mod. I decided to leave it out because I didn't want to get Brian copyrighted. Oh. The windscreen mod, I think I left it out, just in case I left it out and telling you now. The windscreen mod is a modification tray with pins that you can put into the system where you're literally loading the cartridge and not pushing it down. It's made to just put the cartridge in and close it and it's good to go. And it was made to prevent this design flaw, made to extend the life of the pins. So mm -hmm. there is that option. Some of them are running be like that because of a modification. Mm. But Sandy, in today's world, when there is a major design flaw such as this, um, this is when you have a recall, and there's there's normally that you know they pull them off the shelves, and you know Nintendo makes the adjustment, right? And then they put it back after. Why didn't they do that in this case? Well, because because it it didn't really it really took years of use for it to happen. Machines I, I, have to you, I have to ask you something else. You see those arrows there? Let me zoom in. Do you guys remember these arrows on the games? I don't. Oh, it's, wow. It's literally an arrow showing you the way to insert the game. I don't huh. remember. That. Interesting. Um, I, I, I kind of do. Sorry, I don't Ryan. remember those arrows there. Anyway. Ask the chat if they remember it. Yeah, chat, do you remember the arrows? Can you Can you read from the comments? Guys. Yeah, let me go look. Hold on. Robert Humphrey remembers them. Yeah, I don't remember them. Yeah, Robert Humphrey remembers. Let's see anybody else. Uh, the ones the that one know says it's no. the Mandela. I don't remember those. I'm telling you. Will Wall and Maddie remember them. I remember. Maddie remembers them. Lurk Learner, I don't know, not sure. Yeah, it had arrows. Red Snow said, yeah. Jeff says yes. Mark says, I think, yes. Okay. Burgos, I remember. Yeah. Maybe that's a Dean Johnston's in the chat. That might be a personal ME for me. Yeah. Thank All you, right. Dean. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome Dean. Dean. But the problem a lot of people dropping in. There is only one way to be sure if this is a Mandela effect or not. So well, this is question. this Somebody is the part that I think was left out. This is the part that I think should have been said. I want to interject here, Brian. I'm sorry. All time ends his video saying, guys, if you have the original NES, test your systems. Leave it in the comments what happened. That's not going to determine if it's a Mandela effect. Only this will. Go ahead, Brian. And good luck trying to find an unopened Nintendo. It's, they're going to be like probably $65,000 or some crazy number. Oh, like yeah. So. I know. Seriously. Unopened one. It kind of makes yep. me want to go back in time and, and just buy a bunch of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> an, unopened, an unopened Super Mario Brothers just sold for $660,000. What? Yeah. I'm surprised it wasn't 666000 <sighs> Yes, wow. seriously. Somebody would have somebody would have to test a brand new, never used NES system from the eighties. So and a brand new NES game cartridge. Why? Yeah. So um next slide, Brian. Okay. Because the machine and cartridge would need to be tested before any damage is done to the pins, if a brand new machine and game work in the up position. Only then we could call it a change. Only then could we call it a change. But, but so, guys, hang on, Sandy, if, hold on. Yes. Could we possibly find? Because you know, Nintendo's Nintendo has a pretty good parts. You know. No. Line. No. No. There's. They no longer exist. They actually changed the part. So that that's the problem. Uh, that's why everybody's like, just replace okay, it. So you're saying this part now is aftermarket now. It's oh, there's only aftermarket. They're NES two pins. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They changed it quite oh. fast. So the only way to definitely determine if this is a Mandela effect is to test a brand new machine 
with a brand new game to make wow. sure that the pins are perfect. And if it works in the opposition, then it is a Mandela effect. Testing yeah, it on wow. an old machine is not going to tell us because there's no way to put the original pins in. And there's, it, there's just no way. So there's no way to find out. Well, you know what this reminds me of, Sandy? This is like Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> you put the cat in the box, you put some radioactive material in there, you close the lid, you don't know if the cat's dead or alive, right? Yeah. <laughs> right, but uh, credit where credit's due, all time did say this is a potential Mandela effect, and I agree with that. Potentially it is, but... Yeah, until, until we find out from somebody who has an unopened box. Let's yeah. go, go, let's and, go knock uh, Daddy Warbucks's... Uh, uh, what Elon Musk will check it out. Elon Musk, <laughs> yes. Let's let him try it. Yeah. Since, everybody, everybody needs to to hound his Twitter until finally he answers. Right. So Since the thing is, oh, oh, oh before smooth. you start, yeah. Teresa, I'm I'm not I'm not yeah. But that's the thing. It, even if you have the original NES, Brian, go back. I can't talk about this Sorry and not about, that. about Sorry the same about time. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> so even even if you have the original Nintendo. If it's been used, the pins are bent. If you have games, the pins are bent. <laughs> so yep. it should actually work in the opposition because the bent pins create the, uh, what, what am I talking about? Create the... Um, contact? No, yeah, the contact better. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's the thing. That's what's creating the um, necessary... Wow things for it to um cause Work. that thing to happen yep wow, wow. yeah i'm doing a little issue here um uh -oh. the cherry the cherry flew off my cigarette now i don't know where it went but i smell it That's not good. Okay. <laughs> so um yeah Ch testing an old machine doesn't necessarily prove that it's a mandala effect that's all i'm trying to get at and by making a call to action for people to test their machines that still doesn't prove it's a mandala effect the only way to tell is to test a pristine pin game and console. That's what I needed to add. That's all. Okay. So, like Teresa was saying, since we were talking about 80s game tech, we came across a couple of interesting things that we want to show you. Not saying it's definitely a Mandela effect, but I don't remember this stuff, so we're going to ask you. Go ahead. Next screen. Links? All right. Yeah, I remember solid gold letters here. Whoa. And that X was not like that. Do you remember? Chat, do you remember this logo? This has always been the logo. Do you remember that X specifically? Because I remember a normal gold X. I don't remember that. No. What is the Atari links exactly? Is that, that's, I don't, I'm not familiar with the links. Is it a game system or what is it? Yeah, I yeah, I just had a little fire here, but I, I was putting the, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it was little, 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 little. And it was in a safe spot. It was just it just I had to deal with it. Uh oh. That's all. Uh oh. Yeah. <clears throat> that out. Yeah, make sure it's out. <clears throat> so the links was like the first how do I describe it? Like the first um not like a Game Boy. I guess like a Game Boy. But it's more like more like a Sega. What was the Sega one? The one you held in your hands. The Sega one? PlayStation uh, one. Gear? Like oh, a PlayStation one. Oh, the PSP. It was like a PSP? PSP. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. That's what I'm trying to say. Oh. <laughs> I think it had to be wired into the Sega. Oh. So you're telling me it was a handheld Atari? Yeah. Yeah, with okay. a little screen. A little screen on it and you found this so, because of what again well i've seen this logo many times because we've researched atari oh. before we've well, researched sandy, all huh sandy we talked about the atari and they messed up looking R, didn't we yeah that was when i started seeing the lynx logo over and over and over again yes okay in the search well, results do you, do you remember the r and atari being broken i don't no it doesn't look like it's broken at the top if you go back to it. Well, if you zoom, when I zoom in, there, there it is. It's broken. 
Okay. Yeah, the point is the... In the, the chat, Virgo is... says, nope, that X I don't remember. Uh, Scott Garrison says, never remember that. Welcome. Uh, Maddie says, weird. And yeah, that's so it. That's all the answers I got on the X. We're it's obviously living, we're living in another dimension or something. I don't know. That's what it seems like. <laughs> uh, so now Sandy wants to talk about these remote controllers that you can have for your game systems to make your your system uh, work without a cord. Yeah. Do you guys remember wireless Nintendo controllers? I mean, you know, GTFO here. You know, get out of here. I don't. <laughs> that's all yeah, I can say. I, and that acclaim logo looks really messed up, Sandy. The the, the arrows as for the C's. Yes, it does. See, here's the thing. I would have had this. My sister and I would have had these. Had I known these existed. Do you guys remember wireless handheld Nintendo controllers? They had them for Super Nintendo, Sega. They had them Great. all. You guys, hang on. Do you guys remember Nint Nintendo Power, the magazine? Yes. How many? How many of you guys remember that? And it had the cheat codes in there and everything cool. Like um, every month, there was a new release with cheat codes. And then, not to mention, they would show pictures like this. I I don't remember there ever being in the magazine pictures. They were they would have had featured um, controllers, and I remember they were advertising the heck out of the Power Glove. You would have seen commercials for this stuff right here. Yeah, I didn't see anything. Hold on, wait, I got a suspicious rooster or something. Uh, suspicious rooster says, yes, I have some. Did you get them back then, though? Yeah. Did you get it back in the 80s? Oh, and Sandy, we need to, we need to, you know, something else here. It's a good thing those TVs were made pretty solid back in the day because my TV took a beating from my controller so many times. Oh, yeah. And the Wii controllers. Remember the Wii controllers? Yeah, the Wii ones, yeah. Oh, I can't. I'm sorry. Hey, hey, Sandy, you got my daughter saying I can't. She says it all the time now. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> uh, Lurk Learners says Sega had them. Um, your mom does not remember the wireless ones. Um, when Lurk Learner said, not Nintendo, though. Um, I don't remember wireless controllers back then. This is Gemini 79. Uh, Willwall vaguely remembers the wireless, but I think they were a little delayed. Maddie says, never. Uh, that's what I thought. I thought wireless controllers came out in the 90s, not in the 80s. Well, the robot's already been talked about. <laughs> and Philo does not remember cordless controllers back then. Robert Humphrey says the earliest wireless I remember were for the N64. You guys are quiet. I'm just listening to you guys. Oh, okay. So, that's it. Uh, again, I hope you guys didn't take it as an attack on all time. I think he did a good job presenting it. He just left that one little thing out. That the pins, when, when they get damaged, like they do, they all do. It's a design flaw over time. Uh, it can make your gameplay better in the opposition because it makes better contact. And the only way to verify 100% that this is a Mandela effect is to test it on a brand new machine with a brand new game so that the pins are in pristine, right from the factory condition. That's the only way. So... All right, shall we move on? That's it. Isn't that it? 
Uh, yeah, I guess that's it, Sandy. I had no idea it was going to be um, this this great. I mean, you put together a really awesome presentation, didn't she, guys? Yes, she did. Thank you, Sandy. Yeah, Sandy Do you have anything else you want to show, Brian? Uh, not really. I'm, I'm going to have to take care of my child. Uh, we're going to have to call it a night. Yep. I want to thank everybody for coming. Man, we had 28 people. That's amazing. Wow. So the prosecution Maddie says, rest. Yeah, the prosecution rest. I love it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so. Um, what is Eddie Von Kuhn Eddie Von Kuhn no, just this NES had the just, biggest library, but N64 was better for fast gameplay. That's true. I believe that. That is true. Yeah. And, and uh, oh, thank Dean you, Johnson, Robert. Dean Johnson, cordless controllers. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Ephesians 6 Paul, break free. Oh, that is that is sweet. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dean, for that. Thank you, Dash. I just hope no one watches this later and takes it the wrong way. So I keep saying it over and over. <laughs> uh, oh. See <clears throat> Any, anything else, Sandy? Teresa? Um, you want to huh? do a final shout out, Teresa? Everybody yeah, now. cool. And Sandy, you and I will be back on Friday. I think um, Curious or just uploaded a video. Um, Sandy, are, yes, you guys back doing Mandela, are you guys doing a Mandela Monday tonight on Dan's channel? I have no idea. Okay, well, hopefully we, look, we, look, we look forward to seeing you there. Um, again, guys, have a great Mandela Effect night. God bless. Brian. Oh, he's got to get the EV, Teresa. Oh, what were okay. you saying? No, I I'm, told, I'm just. I, I, I asked Teresa to do a shout out, but if you have to go, you have to go. It's okay, okay, yeah. It's, quick, quick shout out, Teresa. Quick. Quick shout out. Okay. Philo Fire 3, Eddie Von Kuhn, Maddie, that guy Richard, Lurk Lerner, uh, Anita McFarland, Jeff Sanzibar, Dean Johnston. Robert Humphrey, that guy Richard, I think I said Lurk Learner, the one, Suspicious Rooster, um, Burgos, Dean Johnston, Gemini 79, Phyla Fire 3, I've probably seen your name twice, Will Wall, and I think that's everybody. I did oh, say Burgos, yes. right? Well, I'm with Maddie. Yeah, I prosecution, rest. prosecution rest. We shall get out that the, the the gavel. Yep. And Dave Summers. <laughs> Dave Summers. Okay. Got him. All right. Hey, everybody have a good night. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Sandy. We'll see you guys again soon. Good night. Good Thank night. you, everyone, for coming. Great show. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa. Good night, everyone.